If you're building something complicated in Airtable, I can almost guarantee that you are going to need to understand a roll-up field. This is an advanced field in Airtable, but it allows you to do so much with only a few clicks of your mouse. It's a really powerful tool, and if you can learn to leverage it appropriately, your Airtable solutions are going to go to the next level. In this video, I want to go through all there is to know about the rollup field. I'm going to be breaking it down for you step by step and including brand new features that we've never covered before that were only just released in early 2025. So if learning more about the Airtable rollup field is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you get the full potential out of no-code tools, and Airtable is our favorite no-code tool and one of the cornerstones of everything that we build here at Gap Consulting. Now, in this video, as I said, we're going to be looking at the roll-up field. But before we get to that, I first want to invite you to grab some free templates. My team has put together five Airtable templates from the most common use cases that we see here at Gap Consulting. And we're giving them to you absolutely free with video instruction for each template. You can sign up and download those templates, save them into your own Airtable account for free if you go to gapconsulting.io slash templates and share your email address and we'll give you next steps via email. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. We're gonna take a look here and we're actually gonna be using the asset and inventory tracking template. This is one of the templates that you can download if you access the freebie I just mentioned. So go ahead and sign up and follow along here in your own version. Now, high level, this template is allowing us to look at different inventory items. We can then check them in and out using our different users. So here I've got two different users, myself and Ali example, and you can see a long checkout log. So every time Gareth or Ali has checked out an item, it's recorded with a new record in this particular table. Now let's imagine that we uh, wanted to see how many different items were currently outstanding, but we didn't just wanna know the number of items that someone still had checked out. We wanted to know a lot more information about it. Well, let's first have a better understanding of the data that we have here. If I go back to my users, you can see that users are linked to a checkout log. This is where we've linked to that other table. So if something is getting checked out, it's being checked out on behalf of a specific user. So there's a lot of different things that we're gonna find here in this linked relationship. You know, many, many records as a different user checks in and out various items from our inventory. But what we wanna know is to get a list of the information about things that are not yet returned to us. So let's say for all the different items that are still checked out, we wanna know when were they checked out. Well, we can use a roll-up field to get this information. So first we're gonna to go to the table where we want to bring that information. Where are we rolling it up to? And in this particular case, we're rolling it up to the user. This information is specific to the user and it relates to the way that we've linked to the checkout log. So we have these two different tables and this is a key function behind rollup fields. But we need to go to the table that is the source. Where are we rolling the data up to? And in this case, that's the user table. What we want to do is we want to look at the checkout log and we want to bring back the checkout dates, but only the checkout dates where the date checked in has not been filled out. Because if the date checked in is filled out, then we know it's been checked back in. So it's no longer checked out, right? So that's one way of saying it. Alternatively for our template, we can also look at the status here and say we only want to bring back those items that have the status of checked out. Either way, I'm gonna go here into the users table and I'm gonna start this roll up field. And I'll just call this dates co for checked out. And we're gonna use the roll up type. The first thing it's gonna ask us is what is the linked relationship that we care about? The source of the roll up. Well, the data that we're looking for, that has to do with the checkout log. So of course that is the source here. If our users table linked to multiple tables, we would see multiple options here. In our particular case, our users table only connects to one table, so we only have this choice. 
Next, we want to tell Airtable what field do we want to roll up. Now, our default value here might be to look at the date checked out. This is the information that we care about. Now, when we actually use this field, you're going to see that because it is a date field, it's going to show up in a bad way. We're going to have to make some changes here. No problem. But we're going to start here with the date checked out. What we care about is what is the date checked out. Now, the third mandatory component for every rollup field, after we've chosen the source and then the field that we wish to roll up, then we have to determine the aggregation formula. How do we want to display this data? Now, a lot of times when you're working with a rollup field, you're going to have some math to perform. You might have some addition, some uh, multiplication. Maybe you're looking at an average value. This is great if you're looking at calculating things like the lifetime value of a client or the average star rating that uh, someone has received in different reviews. These things can be calculated with different aggregation functions. But for us, we're looking at essentially text, right? We're looking at date fields that we're going to display as text. So we're going to take this default formula here called array unique and the values, values being the date checked out that we assigned here. So it's going to look at all the linked relationships that we have to check out log. It's going to look at the date checked out field, and it's going to give me a list of all of those fields, comma separated as array unique meaning that if the same thing repeats, well, then it's only going to show it to us one time. Well, this isn't necessarily helpful in our case because we want to see if somebody checked two or three things out on the same day, we want to see that information. So we're going to update our function to be an array join. Array join means that we're going to simply join all of these different values and we're going to separate them here with the semicolon. So they're going to show up this way. We can change this separator if we want it to be a line break or uh, a dash or whatever we want, but we're going to join all of them. All right, now let's go ahead and create the field here and see what we get. So this looks a little jumbled as I said it was going to, and that's because we're looking at a date time field and it's converting it in a weird way. It's converting it to text and it doesn't look very clean, right? This is a mess. So let's first fix this. In order to do that, it's a quick and easy fix. We're gonna to go to our checkout log. My preferred way to do this is to actually just insert a new field. I'm gonna call this date co for checked out. I'm gonna write a formula here, and I'm going to simply do a date time format. I'm looking here at the date checked out, and we're going to just output this in a standard uh, lowercase l format, which is basically saying month, day, and year. So this new field here looks very similar to this one. The difference is this is text, whereas this is actually a date. So when we look at this text field, which is 1 slash 1 5 slash 2 0 2 4 for this particular one, well, it's going to be easier for our aggregation function to perform a roll up on. So let's go back now to our users table and we're going to reassign this to our new field date co and save. And you're going to immediately see that this is much cleaner, but I don't have a space in between everything and I don't love that. I want there to be a space after our semicolon and this will clean it up even a little bit more. So after the semicolon inside the quotes, I'm going to add a space and now we can see that we've got a cleaner output. Now the next part. I only care about these dates. I only want to see them here if the item has not been checked back in. So let's get to that part. Now here are our two different options inside of the rollup field as of this recording. Now Airtable is constantly being updated. So when you access this video, there might be new upgraded options. But right now, this is what we're working with. So we can go here and only include specific records. And that's what we want. We don't want to roll up every single date that an item was checked out. We only want to know the dates for items checked out if the item has not been returned. That's the key component. So we're going to conditionally bring this information back. So we set up a rule. We toggle this on and we say, I only want to know this information if the date checked in is empty. Scrolling down, I find it here and we can save this up again and we have a much shorter list just like that. 
So what am I seeing now? Well, here we go. Gareth only has one item that has not been checked back in. Ali has four. And you'll remember we used an array join function here, not array unique. And this is important because we see that we have two options here or two instances where an item was checked out on December 17th, 2024. And we see both of those informations here. So both instances are being displayed here. Now, the final component of this, and again, this is optional, if you wanna get fancy with your rollups, is to sort the data that is being returned to you. So in our case, for example, let's say we wanna see the most recent checkout at the top of the list. So I wanna see 1217 first, and I wanna see the oldest checkout at the bottom, November 3rd, okay? Well, I simply go in here and I turn on sorting records before summarizing. This is a brand new feature that only just came out a few weeks ago as of this recording. So here I can establish some sort of sorting. So let's say I wanna sort it by the date checked out. I'm gonna actually use the literal date field here. And I'm gonna say, I wanna sort this from latest to earliest. The latest checkout, the most recent checkout, is gonna be at the top. And we're gonna go back in reverse chronological order when I save it. And just like that, you see that now the 1217 is at the top and there we are. Now, you may in some cases want to actually insert your own line break. You'll see that I don't have a line break here or a carriage return. I'm simply separating by that semicolon. If you find yourself needing that line break, it is a slash N. So rather than using the semicolon in the uh, formula function here, I'm going to simply come in and do a slash N and I can get rid of that space at the end. So what I'm separating these things with now is simply a carriage return, and you can see that they now each show up on their own line. Even if I make this a very wide field, each one of them has their own line. So that's a slash N inside of your quotations. That is going to be a really helpful way for you to make sure that you're getting things formatted a little bit better. Now, if you don't wanna see that repeating thing, if you don't wanna see 1217 showing up two times, Again, go back to the array unique function. You have so many different options. If you're curious about the different options available to you for this, simply do a search for Airtable rollup functions. There's a short list in Airtable's blog that will show you the 10 or so different functions that you can use to bring back exactly the data you're looking for in your rollup. Now I hope you can see from this short video that there are many, many valuable things that you can do with this rollup field. It's gonna help you with reporting. It's gonna help you understand exactly what you need to look at at a moment in time. But the two key optional updates here are being able to conditionally show information. That was the first toggle we looked at, like only bring in certain information. And then secondly, sorting that information. It used to take us a lot of effort to get these two things done, and now it can be done with some simple toggles thanks to continuous improvement in Airtable. Hey, I know we went pretty quickly in this video. I hope you got a ton of value from it. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. If you have questions, swing by our website. We'd be happy to help. But most importantly, keep on building.